Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Rolf Jacobson. And I'm Catherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And this is the podcast uh, for October 13th, 2024. Uh, we are moving from the book of Exodus, where we've been for the last few weeks, uh, or the last couple of weeks, into uh, the Deuteronomistic history, to use the uh, the academic term, but into particularly the first book of Samuel, and we're looking at the story of Hannah. We had talked about the the first uh, several um, Sundays, or the first several weeks, uh, being a, a kind of category or a sub-theme of promising beginnings. We'd like to suggest that this Sunday would start a new uh, kind of sub-theme or, or thematic series uh, that we're calling Unfolding Promises of God Through the Prophets. Uh, so in the stories coming up, we're going to hear a lot of uh, God's promises to God's people, uh, and then how those promises are worked out in the life of Israel, in the life of Judah, uh, and then uh, through the prophets as well. So uh, we hear uh, here in the story of 1 Samuel, well, let me say first of all, uh, last Sunday, we were uh, at the Golden Calf. We were at Mount Sinai, uh, Exodus 32, uh, that familiar story of uh, the uh, Israel's unfaithfulness towards God, uh, Israel's worshiping uh, and uh, worshiping the Golden Calf. Um, and now we're moving to uh, the book of 1 Samuel. So what comes in between? You might just want to review briefly for your people. Uh, uh, the, the 40 years of wandering in the wilderness come after the story of the golden calf, uh, the death of that first generation of Israelites, and then that second generation of Israelites coming into the promised land, uh, promised all the way back to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. Uh, then we have the period of the judges, uh, and the, that period uh, uh, told in the book of Judges uh, is... Uh, a story of degeneration and of apostasy. Uh, the book of Judges starts out pretty well with the judge Deborah. Uh, it ends with this terrible story of, of a gang rape uh, of a woman uh, and, and then the dismemberment of her body and civil war in Israel. And so the book of Judges ends uh, that there was no king in Israel and everyone did uh, what, what was good in their own eyes, right? So a, a, a definitely a, a kind of collapse of uh, law and order, a collapse of society, certainly a collapse of the people's faithfulness towards God and God's law. And then we get this, well, then we get the book of Ruth, which we talk about in other um, uh, years of the narrative lectionary, but we also get the story of Hannah. Uh, and it's interesting that uh, the the book of First and Second Samuel uh, that speaks so much about kingship and that leads into the books of First and Second Kings. The book, uh, all these four books that talk so much about kings, begin not with the story of a king, but with the story of uh, a barren woman. And of course, we know this story uh, from Genesis as well and Exodus. We, we hear about many barren women. But in this case, uh, the woman's name is Hannah. She longs for a son, uh, and she does not uh, have a son. And so she goes to the sanctuary of the Lord uh, and prays for a son. Uh, and that's where, where we are in this story. Thank you for that, uh, Catherine. It's also uh, worth noting that the timing for the book of Ruth would be the same timing uh, as, the, as the book of, uh, of, of Judges. Uh, so the timeline is running around the same. And sometimes we forget about that, uh, that... Um, uh, we haven't always paid attention to the placement of women in Israel's story, but um, when we are attentive to it, we realize that there's a uniqueness in how for that particular cultural time period that women are lifted up so significantly throughout the entire narrative. Now, that's that's an excellent point, Joy. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. We really still really are in the time of the judges. Uh, Samuel, who is, of course, Hannah's son, uh, becomes a, a, a judge, a, a prophet, a priest, kind of all of those roles uh, rolled into one. Uh, so uh, his, his beginning, uh, his, his birth story is here, uh, and the promises of God to, not just to his mother, but to him uh, and to 
uh, all who follow. I should have also mentioned this, this, this kind of uh, sub-theme that we're talking about, the unfolding promises of God through the prophets. We're suggesting that this should go uh, several Sundays through November 24th, through the story uh, or the, the text from Jeremiah 36, right, uh, that, that it should go through Christ the King Sunday, in other words, November 24th. And then, of course, you begin Advent on December 1st. Hello, I'm Matt Skinner with a brief interruption in the middle of this podcast. Our fall fundraising campaign has launched and we could really use your help to reach our goal. Since 2007, Working Preacher has operated as a totally free online resource accessible to anyone. There are no paywalls, no registrations, no barriers, no passwords, and no conditions, just like the gospel of Jesus Christ itself. And in order to keep Working Preacher that way, we depend on support from donors just like you. Your donations are more than charity. They make you active partners in this ministry. God uses preaching to change lives, and Working Preacher donors like you are essential parts of that spiritual labor. You have until October 31st to make a gift that will count toward the fall campaign. And let me add that we have a special gift for a limited number of monthly donors. If you're one of the first 10 donors to make a recurring gift of $10 per month or more to this ministry, then you'll receive a book by Walter Brueggemann in the Working Preacher Books series titled Preaching Jeremiah, Announcing God's Restorative Passion. I personally am grateful for the generosity of everyone who donates to Working Preacher. Your financial gifts to this ministry are reminders that Christ's church is always in action. Thank you. Yeah, I want to point out that it's not um, so that Exodus starts, um, right, the story of Exodus, delivery of God's people starts with women, that, um, of course, Ruth is profoundly a woman's book, that First Samuel starts with women, and that continues. But it's also then that when, if, if you were to zoom out on these stories, this is the national story. So, so really beginning in Exodus, it's the story of the nation. Uh, but when you zoom up close, it's the story, uh, where does God start to work uh, to deliver the nation and to move on these global um, sort of vast vistas? And that is God starts at the bottom. God starts at uh, at at the very God starts with family, God starts with um, troubled family, a dysfunctional family that you see here in the story, um, with you know with the way that um, El Elkanah um, treats his family, uh, his two wives, uh, but then you get God intervening uh, in the history. Um, in the life of Hannah, with what then becomes the birth, as you said, he's the last judge, and he's the one that then anoints the first couple kings, and and so he's this he's this massive transition figure. Yeah, I I like uh, that way of talking about it, uh, Ralph. That that the story begins at the bottom, or or begins, uh, you know, not from the perspective of of kings uh, or of judges but from the perspective of, uh, of a family. Mm. And that's really what Hannah's song is about, too. So uh, we often say this uh, on this podcast, but we've, put, we've chosen a few verses from chapter one. Obviously, if you want to read more than the you know, five or six verses that we've chosen, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, I would say certainly do tell the story, even if you don't read it, uh, about how Hannah prays, uh, you know, is, is the barren, uh, second wife of Elkanah uh, uh, prays for a son, uh, and that Eli the priest uh, thinks that she's drunk, but then uh, offers her a word of promise, uh, and that sets up then Hannah's prayer or Hannah's song in chapter two, which, by the way, is uh, is a song that serves as a model for Mary's Magnificat, of course. Uh, in the Gospel of Luke, so and in this song, it really does talk about God's um, uh, the the liberation theology phrase, right? The God's preferential option for the poor. I'm not sure I would put it exactly that way, but certainly God's 
uh, God's uh, care for the those who are uh, who are lower in society, uh, and God's turning the world upside down so that, uh, as Hannah sings, the Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes. So uh, Hannah's, uh, pr- uh, uh, Hannah's prayer has been answered. Uh, you might say it was just you know a personal problem and, and, a, and a personal uh, answer from God, and that's certainly profound in and of itself. But in that promise of God, in that working out of that promise of God, in that unfolding promise of God, uh, Hannah sees the world in a new way and understands that God does indeed uh, take care of the lowly and, uh, and and turns the world upside down. I would add um, t- uh, to your comment about the Magnificat, which um, we do have the, ver- the, 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 gum- the accompanying gospel text is from the Magnificat uh, mm-hmm. for this week, and that uh, Carolyn Jennings uh, has a setting of uh, these two songs next to each other, Hannah's song and Mary's song, called a new Magnificat, which even if uh, it's probably too late to plan it for worship, but you might just enjoy going out and listening to it on YouTube as part of your preparation. I appreciate the way you said, uh, uh, Catherine, um, that Hannah's worldview has changed. Uh, she's asking God for something that in that context, in that culture, would be the desire of a woman in particular, a need of a family. Um, But in asking, she turns, the promise she makes to God is that this would be, that she would give the child back to God. And Mm -hmm. so in her desire, she um, yields even before that prayer is answered, and then uh, respects that promise that she makes to God when God uh, fulfills her promise. But the prayer then becomes a recognition that um, those who have been lifted up are not lifted up by their own. They're lifted up by God's grace. And um, what we'll see in sort of the situation, what we've seen with the situations uh, with the judges, what we'll see with the situations with the kings, is that those who become arrogant and believe that they can position themselves outside of the hand of God, very similar to the faults of Israel, is that that's not possible. So her prayer is actually a demonstration that that position is a gift. It's, it's grace from God, and it's not something that we do on our own. I'll just point that. I, I love that, Joy. That, that, that preaches, as they say. Um, Phew. Good to know that. <laughs> <laughs> I might do that with it. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to add one other thing about Hannah's song, uh, and uh, uh, it's that Hannah's song uh, points forward not just to Mary's Magnificat, but also to the stories that will follow, and particularly the story that we're going to be talking about next week, that is the story of David. Uh, because uh, listen to uh, to the, uh, the end of Hannah's song. She says, The Lord, his adversary shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of of his anointed. Mm -hmm. Uh, Our listeners probably already know this, but anointed, of course, in Hebrew is Mashiach, uh, and that is the basis, that is the word Messiah, uh, what what we know in uh, in English as Messiah, in Greek as Christ. So uh, the Hannah song is, is praising God for God's salvation, praising God for God's fulfilled promises to her, and also looking forward to what God will do in and through God's anointed. First of all, David, uh, uh, who we will talk about next week, uh, and then of course, uh, son, the son of David, uh, the Messiah, who we know in Jesus. Because that is the promise of God. That is the promise that God has given from the very beginning through the descendants of Abraham and Sarah for the sake of the world. So this uh, theme that we're lifting up uh, is is 
It, it comes from God and is articulated by those who trust God. I Love to Tell the Story is a production of Luther Seminary's Working Preacher. The narrative lectionary was developed at Luther Seminary and has been hosted on Working Preacher since 2011. Find episodes and links at workingpreacher.org slash narrative. And be sure to rate, subscribe, and comment on YouTube. Thanks for joining us.